Howdy, fellow deer hunters. I sure hope you've had an opportunity this year to get out and chase those deer. I'll tell you what, I sure have had a great season. This has really been a lot of fun, and I've had some wonderful opportunities and really been blessed with a couple of really nice properties to hunt this year. I've had a few people ask me in the recent past how I do these mounts that I do, and it's really more or less a trial and error thing. This is what I would call more or less the poor man's taxidermy show here segment. <laughs> it's going to be totally candid, but I just wanted to show you real quick some of the stuff that I've come up with. I'll just kind of run through them real quick for you here. I get as much meat off, off these as I possibly can by, by carving them off with a, a good bony knife. Something that's got a really, really good point on it. Um, once I get to that point, then I can start boiling the head in uh, a deep pot of some kind. And uh, another, another item that you'll want to have too is, a, is an old toothbrush. I'm sure you've got kids and uh, folks in the house or maybe yourself have some old toothbrushes laying around that you can use. Instead of just throwing them out, hang on to them for this sort of thing. This guy here was the, the bow hunt that I had, um, I'm trying to remember the exact date, it was late October. But the nice thing about this was that um, I was able to take the skull and since the, the rack wasn't really heavy, which is a lot of times the case that you have in these uh, smaller racks like this, you can actually set the skull back down on the jawbone and put it on there in such a way to where well here we go sits right back down and and then when you put it together it doesn't rock back if you set it right <laughs> you push it see about like that you can set it there on and it makes a nice little desktop mount Try to show you these a little bit closer later on. But this one here, I was unable to do that with because every time that uh, I wanted to set it down, it would rock backwards because the mount was heavier. So I saved the, uh, the jawbone for something else. And sometimes if you boil them too much, the, this little piece of cartilage right in here, whatever it is that holds the two pieces of the jawbone together, will separate and then you'll have to glue it back together and I just did a few gluings with uh, a clothespin holding it together as a clamp worked pretty good but um, I can show you this a little bit more detail here in a minute but that's how it's going to hang on the wall And I have a screw that's back in behind here that you can barely see from the way it'll be presented to your viewing public. Um, they'll never see the screw. And then there's a couple of places where I did a couple of other things to help anchor it down. Okay, here I've zoomed in a little bit. I'm hoping that uh, it will do it justice here as I try to explain this. But right underneath here it's really kind of hard to explain exactly where it is to you I'm gonna kind of point in this area right here but there is a wood screw that I have taken through a, a hole uh, that I made with a drill bit on the underneath side inside of here into the skull and obviously it's best to use like some sort of a rounded bit. Don't try to do it with a wood bit. You'll end up tearing it up. It'll need to be just a tad bigger than the, the screw that you're going to be putting in it. Because you're going to have to feed the screw back into it. But before you actually put the rack down on top of the, the wood, you have to 
know about where it's going to be by sizing it up on here and then you can use a, a pin to mark the spot then you can screw it in I would suggest hand screwing and using a something like a deck screw that has a, a big threads on it <clears throat> that would hold it really well and then you can put your finger on the back side as it's coming through and when you feel it back it out to where you know it's in there enough and then another thing that I've done is these little points that come down on the deer's skull I found out where those were going to be and I marked them and then I kind of reamed out a spot in the wood itself to where I made a little indentation filled up some glue in there and then rocked it back in there so it'll prevent the lateral movement back and forth this way when you hang it on the wall and the actual wood itself I picked up on sale it was like five bucks at a Michaels stained it with some wood stain that I had laying around the house it's kind of a nice authentic uh, actual tree bark edge to it I like it I'm pretty happy with it you save yourself a lot of money because uh, you know uh, there's all different kinds of trophies out there I mounted my first deer years ago but I'm not going to mount everything that comes along. My wife would kill me for that. <laughs> and that jawbone that came from that deer, you could use it for a lot of things. You could use it for paperweight or... Oh, you know, you could use it as an example of, uh, you know, maybe aging your deer. Having them sitting around. I like to collect bones and different things like that that I find in the woods. I've got a couple of... Uh, cool turtle shells. Now here's the turtle shells. These were kind of cool. A lot of times when I find them, they're not really in this petrified state. They're pretty crushed up. But these are really actually pretty good shape and I was able to salvage them and you can say I found them. Boil them. Get all the impurities off. One of them I found out in Lacine, Kansas when I was doing some deer hunting years ago found it walking in in a creek bottom right off the bat I can't remember where I found the other one but they're in pretty good shape you can see how how nice they look another nifty little item I found here on a local property survey I was doing years ago I'm going to say this is a possum skull, but I'm sure somebody may correct me, but it sure kind of looks like one to me. But I found that. If I recall, I probably still boiled it to just make sure we got rid of the impurities and everything. If you hear any sneaking around, it's my daughter. She just got home from school and uh, she's trying to bear with her dad here. He's doing one of his crazy YouTube videos. Little side note here, since she's walking through... Um, these are, uh, bur oak acorns, and this is a little bracelet we made years ago that won't fit on her hand now, will it, Rebecca? No. But she and I will collect these every year, and lately we've been, um, using them to make, um, ornaments for the tree. We'll run them together and, and kind of use them as a garland. Uh, we're maybe eventually going to try to run a string of lights around them or something, but it's something you can do with, with something else that you find out there in creation. Here's a little something else I did here. It's a nice six that I found years ago doing a survey in Blue Springs, Missouri. Never can find the other shed, but... I imagine it probably was an eight, but I had these hen feet and I haven't nailed them down yet, but the hen that I harvested years ago and at this point I kind of thought that's kind of a nifty little mount way to do that. You know, deer and turkey kind of hang out together, so I thought, well, let's just put that in there like that and that'll be a nice little conversation piece. And here's another item, since we're on, on a roll here, I might as well show this off too. This was a 
gobbler, about a two and a half year old gobbler that I had harvested my first time turkey hunting years ago on Hillsdale State Park and Wildlife Area in Kansas. And uh, what I did was, was I just cut the legs off and then you can see the spurs. Those are like one inch spurs and then every place that the, the actual feet or claws, what have you, would touch the wood, I would hit it with a little glue and it's, it's not going anywhere. So you could do all kinds of stuff with that. I just got it sitting around the office at the moment. Let me see if I can explain this a little bit more in detail here. Tilt it up here like this. Get some light on it. And you can see that screw back in there. And then if you turn it around, you can see those points I'm talking about that make contact with the wood. You just bore out yourself a little hole in each spot. One right here, and then one on the other side. Fill it with glue and let that rock back in there. <clears throat> and it, it isn't a perfect deal, um, but it's enough to keep it from moving around too much. You can lift up on it. It does move some, but it's still anchored pretty good back there when you do that. One thing too, I would say that just little tidbits of information that I come across when I'm doing this over the years, but this piece right here is gonna wanna come out when you boil it. It'll do it on its own, don't worry about it. As a matter of fact, when you do take it out, if you don't really have a real deep pot to boil it in, it actually allows you to submerge it deeper, and then you can save those pieces and then glue them back in later with really a small amount of glue. It doesn't take a lot. And the stuff really dries pretty clear so you can't see it from a distance. It won't show up at all. But um, this is gonna get uh, mounted downstairs in the office somewhere. So I just thought I'd kinda try to show you a little bit about how I do this. Again, just boil the meat off after you get as much of it as you possibly can out with your knife. I would say that one of the hard places to, to handle is down in this hole back here where that screw's coming down. That's where the brains are at. You really have to get up in there with your toothbrush. So, Anyway, any questions, shoot them my way. If not, y'all have a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, and I imagine we'll touch base sometime before that happens. <laughs> Happy hunting, y'all.